It's early October. Autumn has just begun. The temperatures have dropped way down and the plants are responding beautifully to this change of temperature. Now at this time of year, really high on my priority list is the autumn or fall care of my garden lawn. Hello, my name is Una and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. This summer has been long, hot and very, very dry. Add to that two large dog and a third one that comes as a regular visitor that is a recipe for disaster for my lawn. So it needs some TLC. Let's get going. The list of things we need to do is here on your screen. Mow tight, edge, dethatch, aerate, overseed, feed and water. And then any additional problems you might have. In my case, these two additional problems are lack of soil depth in a paving stone area and toxic urine in one of the dogs. So what tools am I going to be using to care for my garden lawn? Well, with the exception of the lawnmower, everything else is contained inside this garden cupboard. As you can see, I don't even have a garden shed, just a little cupboard. There's no much room for anything very sophisticated. Certainly, if you're expecting top of the range electrical gizmos, you're not going to get it. This is Granny's garden after all. With the exception of the electrical lawnmower, I'm basically going to be using three different tools. An edging spade, a dethatching rake, and an aeration tool. I'm going to take 30 seconds to talk about dogs and lawns. Now I love dogs, but dogs also love lawns. So as gardeners, we just have to deal with it. I have two resident dogs here and both of them are quite large. Dog number one, Boston, is a German Shepherd mix and he's a male dog, so he doesn't actually urinate on top of the lawn, but he does urinate on top of plants. So I give him a choice of two or possibly three plants for him to consider as his. These plants are going to lose their leaves, they're going to become quite ugly, they're going to be literally sticks sticking up at the ground dead, but to him it doesn't matter. Those are his plants and he'll go over and over and over again to those same plants. Now and again, he's going to chance his arm and he's going to be eyeballing you to see if you're looking. And all you've got to do when he raises a tentative leg is go, ah, 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 and he'll put his ears down, put his tail between his legs and scoot off to where he normally does his business. Now the second dog you'll have seen many, many a time in my videos, it's Lily the Black Lab. Now she's an adorable creature, super boisterous, and loves to race round and round and round on the grass. And this gives you a different set of problems. You need a grass that's tough and is able to withstand this heavy traffic and especially skidding movements. The dogs get taken out twice a day into the open countryside and she runs here and there after her ball, but she never loses energy. So she comes in and she's always racing around on this grass. Now as regards urinating, she's great. She's, she hates being seen in an unladylike position in public. So she tends to go into the woodland area of the garden, hide where there's lots and lots of mulch and do her business there if she has anything to do. Then we have the problem of the third dog. Kenya, the fox red Labrador. She's usually here for about, uh, about once a month for three or four days. She was born in the UK. She again absolutely adores lawns, particularly my lawn. And her problem is she does like to urinate in the middle of the lawn. And worse still, she doesn't have a particular spot. Every single time it's in a different area. And by the time she leaves at the end of the week, it looks as if my lawn has caught chicken pox. Now in the winter months or after rain, this is not too much of a problem. But with a hot, dry summer, you're left with perfectly rounded, like almost like burn marks in your lawn. So those are going to have to be reseeded now in autumn. Today is an absolutely perfect day to get started on this fall lawn care. We're going to have a nice, bright, sunny, dry morning, followed by midday onwards, rain. So the first two tasks, mowing and dethatching, have to be done when the lawn is completely dry. And then things like aerating and edging, have to be done, or at least it's a lot easier to do when the lawn is nice and moist. So it's absolutely perfect. Hopefully I'll be able to get the first two elements done or the first two tasks done within this two hour period. Now before I start on the general dethatching, I'm just going to do a little bit of extra work on these urine patches that are completely burnt out and just going to scrape away with a, with a fork. I'm going to remove all this dead grass and just leave the earth exposed for seeding. See this is just totally fried, totally fried. Now. 
this is a dethatching rake. Now, as you can see, they're, they're angled in a curve because the idea is not to stick into the ground. The idea is to pass like a comb through your hair, in this case, a comb through the grass and remove all that dead grass debris that's been accumulating over the last year. So basically, you're going to be making backward and forward movements. You can see already the amount of dead debris it's raking up. Now keep it angled like this. Don't angle it downwards because if you angle it downwards you're going to start digging up the roots of the grass and you don't want that. So just keep it angled so it's just removing all that debris that you don't want. Now even from those few passes, pick this up. Even from those light few passes, look at all this dead dirt debris that it's picked up. I'm back out in the garden now and as you can see behind me it is quite overcast so it did in actual fact rain. The weatherman got it right, will wonders never cease. <laughs> so I'm now going to start the aerating. I've got a nifty little tool here, dead simple, totally manual obviously, and all it consists of is two little prongs. These little prongs are hollow as you can see here. On one side they are slightly higher, sort of like a, an inclined and that just makes it easier to slot into the ground. The idea is, is as you stick it into the ground this hollow tube fills up with soil and as you plug it in the next time the plug of soil already in gets pushed out through the hole in the end. It's as simple as that. Does it have to be mechanical? No, obviously it doesn't. There are loads of electrical both aerators and dethatchers on the market. They are quite expensive and certainly if you don't have a vast expanse of lawn is it worth it? I don't know, not for me, and certainly I don't have anywhere to put it. It is possible actually to hire for a day or for two days or whatever you want these machines. That is an option if you feel like it. But for me, for the area of lawn I have, it's more than sufficient with what I've got. Good old days. All you do is go up and down in straight lines, about 6 to 12 inches apart. It's got a stirrup, so you just put it in, shove it down and pull it up. And it's as simple as that. You're left with these little plugs of earth. You can leave them on the surface of the lawn and certainly if I wasn't going to reseed afterwards, I would and they just break down and feed the lawn itself. However, because I'm going to reseed and I don't want anything impeding, as I said before, seed to oil contact, I'm just going to rake them up lightly. You don't have to be too excessive about it. If any remain on the ground, that's absolutely no problem at all. But I don't want the lawn riddled with these plugs. That's the aeration done and it took all of about 20 minutes, so not too long at all. Is aeration necessary for a lawn? In my personal opinion, very definitely yes. You've got a year of being laid down on, dogs racing round, people walking across it and everything is super compacted and there's virtually no air getting in there at all. If you make that hole, water gets in, nutrients get in and air gets in and it really responds to that. Also with aeration, can you do it with an ordinary garden fork? Well, of course you can. Obviously the teens in a garden fork are solid and therefore you're probably going to get more compaction, but it's better than not aerating at all. Next little gizmo is just the edger. You can use a wheat whacker. I don't have one. You can use a shovel, probably best a square shovel, and you can use one of these. Why do I use one of these? because this is super lightweight and for me that's very very important. I don't have the whack to be putting in one of these big garden shovels all the way around the edge of my lawn. So I find these super light. It's got this little 
wide part here that you can just step on with your foot and it's just so easy. You can see the edges here are just getting a little bit tatty. Now if I was going to change the shape of a border then I would definitely paint a little line with spray paint. If it's just to rectify what's already there just pull back a little bit, put the spacer in and dig down and then you just peel back the strip that's left. Well, look at that. It's exactly as I suspected. The real distance between this flagstone and this flagstone is one and a half inches. And all that means is that all of the rest of the grass growing has been growing on accumulated debris or accumulated earth that's been blown around or dust. And its maximum depth is about one to one and a half inches, totally insufficient to get through a hot Spanish summer. That's why it's been surviving through the winter because here in the mountains it's very moist. But as soon as this deadpan heat hits, it fries. This entire area, which is where the grass was completely fried over the summer, has now been dug out. And as you can see, what's left are very, very large flagstones and not, as you can see, the little stain there and not these small little things I was seeing. I'm going to stop here now because the grass that was the offending part, the dead grass, has now been removed and the rest of it is more or less green, so it's not offending to the eye at present. And then come winter, I shall start little by little digging out the rest of this. The archaeological dig is going to be called and I'm guessing that this whole area is going to be exactly the same as what I've dug out. Now if that is the case it's going to open up a whole new range of possibilities for me as a gardener. It means I'm going to have an area which I didn't have before for container gardening. Lots and lots of different pots of different sizes and certainly a whole range of possibilities. So our lawn is now ready to be seeded. So we need two things. First of all the grass seed and second, something to spread it with. This is the grass seed I'm going to be using. If you look at the symbols here on the right, particularly the first two are the most important for me. One that says Bajo Consumo de Agua, which basically means that it doesn't require very much water, which is very important here in Spain and indeed in any hot country. And these little footprints, that it is meant for high traffic areas. And there's a little photo here on the left of children playing with the ball. And of course, then I'd have to add in my dog to that equation. Now, as regards a spreader, I prefer totally and utterly manual. You can get them battery operated, you can get big ones that look like wheelbarrows. But for the amount of lawn I've got, this is more than sufficient. It's totally manual. It's got a little handle here on the side, which you just turn around, no resistance whatsoever. And on the top, it's got a trigger switch. What does the trigger switch do? Well, if you look inside, there's a little orange trap door there. And depending on, on what setting you've got here, if I put this on setting one and I push it, you can see the little trap door opens very little. And if I put it on setting four, it opens completely. All the handle does is that when you turn it, this little mechanism starts turning around inside, which helps push the seed out through the trapdoor. If you look underneath, there's a wheel here with little divisions. And as you turn the handle, that goes round and round. And all it does is make the seed spread out evenly over the area you want to reseed. Right, ready to roll. It's at the correct position. It's full of seed, and the only thing you've got to remember now is just to walk at a calm and steady pace. Remember that we need to give special attention to those areas that were burnt by the dog urine. So I'm going to really go to town on the seed here. 
pat it down and it'll be covered by some organic mulch in a few minutes. So after the seed comes the feed. Now this is mantillo, which is basically a Spanish version of organic mulch. Wonderful colour, just look at that. Now what I'm going to do is with a spade, I'm going to spread this over the area I've seeded. So I'm going to be basically over the entire lawn. And I'm going to be paying particular attention to the areas that were completely bare after the urine patches. So I'll just give a little bit of a thicker layer there. I use this twice a year. Once in autumn, like right now, to cover what I've seeded. And then again in spring, just as a lawn feed. Great stuff. It really makes the grass lovely and green and it really responds to it. Look at that. And the next thing you need, of course, is this all-important water. You need to dampen down the seed, dampen down the feed, and give that seed a good kick in the butt to get it moving. Well, that's it over for another year. Of all the annual jobs to do in the garden, it's probably the one I least like, but it is necessary, and certainly the grass does respond to it very, very well. I'm not a Puritan when it comes to lawn. I don't mind if there's clover. As a matter of fact, I love clover, and the bees love clover. I just want it to be green and look healthy. And in a hot, hot climate, that's really all I can ask for. And certainly my lawn is for dogs and for grandchildren. So beauty to one side, it's, the lawn is functional, it's green, it's healthy. So that's a thumbs up. And while we are in the thumbs up, give us a subscribe as well. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week, next Friday in Granny's Garden. Bye bye.